Hey guys, it's Sam. Today we're going to talk about over-refractions. It's a topic that's not spoken about too much um, and can be kind of confusing at first, but it really, really just boils down to understanding the optical cross and how to properly use it. So first off, what is an over-refraction? So in simplest terms, an over-refraction is, is, well, you refract somebody again, but it's after their contact lenses are in situ, they're on their eye, and you want to see, okay, is there any residual prescription? Is, did I get the sphere power wrong? Did I get the cylinder power wrong? Let's refract this person once uh, they're wearing the prescribed contact lenses and see if we need to tweak it some. So I'm just going to go right to the board and we'll kind of see what this looks like. So let's say it's a spherical prescription, a minus three, let's say. Okay, but then you want to over refract the patient. Maybe they're not seeing quite so well. So if when you over refract them on the four opter, you click in um, and you see that they're seeing better with a negative a half over refraction. All you have to do is add your over refraction to your current prescription to get your new prescription. So you would actually prescribe a negative 350, keeping the same parameters that you had for this original lens, right? So you're like your base curve diameter, you can't change that because then it may change the power, especially once we get into talking about like gas permeable lenses, because we know if we're steepening the base curve, we have to add minus power to it, right? If we're flattening it, you have to add plus. So you get different dynamics like that. But this is just a basic spherical example. So where it gets a little more complicated is when we deal with the optical cross to really understand what we're looking at. So let's look at this prescription, for example. Negative two, negative a half, axis 180. Let's say this patient's wearing a, a soft contact lens. Um, they're not seeing quite so well, so you over refract them. Let's say during the over refraction, um, let's say again, yep, you're at a quarter dot, we're not quite there, half a diopter, perfect. So they over refract with a half a diopter sphere power. Now is when you would want to put this on an optical cross to get your new prescription. So let's put the, the original prescription on the cross here. So we have negative two, axis 180. Remember, 180s are horizontal. So we'll say negative two, 90 degrees away from this. So on our 90 degree meridian, all of that cylinder power is present 90 degrees away. So negative two plus the minus a half. So our power along the 90 degree meridian is minus 250. So this is a representation of what the lens looks like in the prescription form here. So, but now we're over refracting at a half a diopter sphere. So what a, what a half a diopter looks like on an optical cross is we have that negative 0.5 in all meridians, right? Because it's a sphere power. So what we're gonna wanna do is add the negative of a half to the 90 and the 180. So when we add the negative of a half uh, over refraction, to this 90 degree, we get negative three. When we add negative a half to this 180 meridian, we get negative 250. So remember, this is our original prescription we're starting with, negative two, negative a half, axis 180. We did a negative a half a doctor over refraction sphere power. So what we're doing again is just putting that on the optical cross. When we add that to our two major meridians, our new powers, we have negative three along the 90, negative 250 along the 180. Remember, just a side note, when you need more minus power to correct um, in the vertical meridian, that's with the rule of stigmatism. But let's take this off the optical cross now. So we're gonna start with our minus 250 at 180, because we start with our, our least minus or more plus uh, power there. So minus 250, just write the axis down, 180. When you take something off the optical cross, you're asking yourself, how far am I traveling from a negative 250 to a negative three? That's a half a diopter. So we have negative 250, negative a half at axis 180. This checks when I check my work. That's our over-refracted prescription. 
That's the new contact lens you would order, keeping all the other parameters the same. Can't stress that enough, but it, it makes sense. You look at it, you say you're adding that negative a half sphere power to the prescription, you get minus 250. The cylinder value stays the same and the axis you know, stays the same on that one. So now I wanna do a spiro cylindrical over refraction. So these are not complicated, but you do definitely want to um, take your time and follow the steps with the optical cross. Let's just say negative one, negative one, axis 180 is the prescribed contact lens. Let's say they're over refracting at a negative one, negative a half axis 180. So it's a huge difference, right? This is what you prescribe them. They're not seeing so well, you're refracting them again with the contact lenses in place. And this is what they need. They need you to add that to their prescription to get them to see properly. I mean, that's probably not realistically ever gonna play itself out, but it may, but, but we just need to understand the concept of how it works. So first thing I wanna do is put this original prescription on the optical cross. That's a negative one at 180. And then we would get, when we transpose it, we get negative two axis 90, okay? So now what we're doing is we're putting this over refraction on top of this power. So we're gonna do just do some basic addition here. So let's see, now we have a negative one over refraction at 180, which means we're putting another minus one power on the 180. So when we add a negative one and a negative one, we get a negative two is our new strength along the 180. So we're adding a negative, now we have a negative 150 at the 90 degree meridian. See how we did that? So even though this is our new prescription, you still have to find the power on 90, right? With that over refraction. So the power along 90 is actually one and a half diopters. So we're gonna add negative two and negative one and a half. That's gonna give us negative three and a half as our strength along the 90 degree meridian. Now it's just as, just as simple as the last um, problem here. Take the negative two at 180, just record your least plus, uh, your most plus, sorry, most plus or less minus, right? Our, so our lower minus value, or if this was plus power, you do you know the most plus power value. You just record it with the axis, so that's at 180. And now we're gonna ask ourselves, how far did we go from a negative two to a negative 350? That's one and a half diopters. Remember, think like a power drum on a lensometer. How far are you traveling? So that's negative one and a half. So, and we could, we could check ourselves, just line it up, negative two, negative one and a half, axis is the same. So this would be our new prescribed contact lens with the over refraction, the sphero cylindrical over, over refraction in place. And there's a number, number of different reasons you would need this. You know how we, we do um, steeper add minus, so if it's said to flatten a base curve by a half a diopter, you know, flatter add plus. So then we're tweaking the, the refraction to add plus power to it. But what happens is you get the patient back in the chair, you added that plus to try and get it exact, but they're not quite seeing so great still. So you could over refract them with the four opter in place, the lens is already in situ. You'll get, generally it's like a half a diopter, you know, a quarter diopter over refraction. And then you're gonna do this, you're gonna add it to your uh, existing prescription to get a final prescription. Because if you don't change the other parameters, the only thing you're really worried about is the lens, the power, the diopter power of the lens. So if you found this to be helpful, and I hope you have, just go ahead and please subscribe to the channel. I'd love for you to uh, share it on social media, opticians on Facebook, just anyone who could potentially uh, benefit from these contact lens training videos. Uh, thank you so much, see you next time.